Hi, my name is Lindy Jung. I am a speculative fiction writer and I talk about writing, books, and whatever else here on this channel. Welcome back! This is episode 4 of the Project Moths writing vlog series, which is basically just following me as I try to finish Moths, which is my dark academia adult fantasy. And get on the road to querying again. Um, yeah, so you're all caught up. It's currently January 20th. I did take the last week off from this vlog series. I'd been vlogging for about like three weeks straight up until this point. And I wanted to just focus on the story again. I'm at sort of a tricky part. I'm writing act four out of five, which is sort of getting to an area where I don't really know what is happening in the sense that I have an outline, but I haven't actually written many of these scenes in advance. So it's a lot more new writing, um, which is rougher writing for me, like first draft writing when previously I had a lot of the scenes already written and I could just sort of like tweak them to fit my needs. At this stage in the story, I also feel like I'm starting to get a little bit murkier on Lark main character's motivations and internal journey. It's more of like a psychologically strenuous part of the story. There's this feeling, this facade of everything being fine, all is well, but is really not and so a lot of the stuff that happens is subtext and I think that's a little bit harder for me to capture in like rougher writing initial writing so it's definitely going to be an act that requires a heavier hand in revisions but that's okay because I'm just sort of trying to lay the groundwork at this point current updates current news uh, I hit 50k I think two days ago I'm a little bit over now like 51 or something like that I've still managed to consistently keep my sort of kind of new year's resolution which is about a thousand words of writing a day some of this has been going into short stories but not that much it's mostly been moths i will say that doing the 1k day has been harder to keep up with lately and i figure once i'm on vacation it'll be basically impossible so i might drop that at some point i'm currently writing chapter 20 and a little bit at the beginning of chapter 20 the inciting incident of chapter 20 has actually turned out to be an entire series of scenes basically something unfortunate happens to a side character and it just sort of brings up a lot of drama and stuff, and I don't know if I'm gonna keep that plot line. I feel like this character doesn't serve much of a purpose to the overall theme, other than like there's some themes about academic obsession and like I've seen a lot of people who are undergoing higher education do horrible things to themselves, like stay up constantly and use substances, not take care of themselves, so it's sort of like an extreme metaphor for that. I just don't I don't know how that fits into the rest of the story, but it's a through line that I've been meaning to explore more. That small bit of theme of, of academic stress causing physical harm to people. But as of right now, I just feel like the groundwork isn't fully laid. So I'm gonna have to like put a pin in that, I think. I did finish writing those scenes and we're going on to the next thing, but I'm still thinking about it. Like it's weighing on me and I feel like I'm not gonna be able to advance until I figure out how to make it either work into the greater story more seamlessly or not go into the story at all. That sort of leads into my next thing, which is that this has been sort of a week where I've been questioning myself a lot more. In my previous vlogs, I was full steam ahead. I was ready to go. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel so much more clearly, but now I'm sort of looking back. And because act four has been murky, I've been seeing the other spots where the story's a little murky, mainly in the world building. On Tuesday, I filmed uh, fantasy world building part five, which is the final part of my fantasy world building series And I realized that like I'm not really practicing what I'm preaching in terms of the magic system I do have a magic system a hard magic system. It's well developed But I just haven't figured out how to slot it into the world more seamlessly the world of mods just to catch you guys up is our world It's the modern world But like what if alchemy were real and could be studied in school and stuff and had this whole like secret history and Rules and regulations like was its own society that is part of but not completely separate from the real world. How would they influence each other and stuff like that? And I feel like I haven't figured out that degree of separation between the world of alchemy and like the world of normal people. <laughs> I think that kind of shows through in the writing, like it's a little bit, the world doesn't feel as firm. You can't really plant your foot in it. And that is bothering me more and more lately. So I went and I decided to do my favorite exercise. I started writing a short story about one of the side characters in Moths, basically that character's life and times. If you know anything about alchemy, even like a little bit, you'll probably be able to figure out who this character is, but I'm gonna keep it a secret for now just in case. Uh, I wanted to write a reimagining of this real historical figure's life. They're not a huge character in Moths. I mean, they're very significant in what they represent, but they're not so involved in the story. So it was cool to kind of like figure out who they were before the events of the story. And also I think it's kind of good. Like it's it was a good idea for me, who's like a very character first writer, to approach world building through the lens 
of a character. Whoa, my hair is doing something very intense right now. By that, I mean that because this character is essentially functionally immortal, they have seen how alchemy has changed from like medieval times onward. I'm not really writing a history of alchemy through this character's eyes, but writing about their life and how things in alchemy change as time goes on for that character, that has helped me envision the world building a lot better. And I feel like I'm not done with the short story yet, but I'm really starting to get a grasp on it. I don't know what I'll do with this piece. Uh, I'm gonna call it Project Gold because led to gold alchemy. I think it'll be good for me to just finish writing it and then if it's good, which honestly, like the first couple pages I've written have been pretty decent. I don't really know what the rules are in terms of like selling a short story that is technically set in the world of a book that is not finished and not out yet. Maybe I'll put it up on my Patreon or something when it's done, um, just for, you know, my own edification. Or I'll just keep it to myself forever and ever. Either way, it has been a really good exercise, so if you are stuck with world building, maybe the thing that you could try is writing a short story from a side character's point of view that sort of explores those elements, and maybe that perspective shift is what you need. So as I was working on the short story, obviously I had the greater scope of the entire mods world, which is relatively developed, to work with, and not all of that can fit into a short story, and I also had new ideas coming in as I was doing more research and stuff into this person's actual history. You know, I'm not writing an actual historical account at all. It's very, very loose, very fictionalized, but there was just a lot going on. Like, I had so many jumbled ideas, and I knew that some of them were good, and some of them didn't really work for the story, and some of them were just like, meh. It was just a mess. Like, my brain was a mess. And that brings us to this video sponsor. Scrintel. As y'all know, I was diagnosed with ADHD as an adult, which made perfect sense given how disorganized my mind can be, especially when it comes to creative endeavors. When I'm working on a story, when I'm working on a world, all of those ideas come flying in at once, they can be really hard to sift through, and I am a very, very non-linear thinker. If you've ever had a conversation with me, you can probably tell because I will loop back on ideas, I will skip ahead three spaces, it's impossible. So. The question is, how do I organize my jumbled ideas into a coherent story? I have tried all sorts of methods to try to organize the mess. I've experimented a lot, but at the end of the day, I usually just end up jotting down my ideas into one of my 544, yes, 544 notes app notes, and then just never revisiting them again and hoping that my brain recalls the information when I actually need it. Obviously, this is not the best system, so I was super stoked when Scrintle reached out to me with an offer to try out their program and also offer you guys a little discount code if you want to try it yourselves. They asked me to test out the program and provide an honest review, so to try it out, I decided to brainstorm Project Gold, taking it from concept to outline entirely in Scrintle. I used columns to create blocks full of details and ideas, organizing them into sections like character and world to put my thoughts in one place, and then I use cards to map out the story's actual plot, using Save the Cat as a very basic framework for the story, connecting and moving various parts as the concept evolved. I also took notes on context, choice, and consequence, the three C's, for each beat to make sure the story flowed, and I was able to connect these cards with the really awesome line function to make sure that they were associated with specific scenes and weren't just floating around as abstract concepts. If you have seen that older writing vlog of mine where I use scene cards to create my novel's outline, this is exactly that. After using Scrintle to map out Project Gold, I have to say that I love how tactile and visual it is. For a non-linear thinker who likes to write stories where every piece connects and every action leads to a consequence, this is such a helpful method of plotting. Scrintle is clean, it's easy to use, it's eco-friendly, there's a short learning curve, and I again have a discount code right here. You can also click on the link in the description box to get 10% off Scrintle today. Thank you again to Scrintle for sponsoring this video. I am absolutely going to keep using it to outline my projects and I'm actually so excited to tackle my next full-length novel with this. I feel like it'll be so fun to map out a full book with this app. So, hey, you know what? I still have a lot of work to get done. I'm going to be filming for the next couple weeks. Again, there's a trip coming up, so it's going to be a little bit of travel. And it is Saturday morning, so I'm going to go hit up a cafe and work for a little bit. Yeah, let's see if we can get chapter 20 done today. I think that's the goal for today, is chapter 20. And then maybe tomorrow, chapter 21. I will see you guys in a little bit. Bye.
still Saturday. I just finished up my day. I'm about to go to bed because I have a really early call in the morning. After I filmed the footage this morning, I went to a cat cafe, as you saw, that was actually kind of near where I live, which is weird because there's like not anything that interesting near where I live. And I was able to get a good amount of writing done. I'm still not feeling fully satisfied with how act four is progressing. I might scrap chapter 20. The The conflict is not there. It's not, it's not giving what I needed to give. It's hard because Lark's character has kind of evolved over the course of drafting this book. I feel like I really, really, really need to evaluate what things I want to keep and what things I want to discard about her arc and her characterization. I've been moving toward making her less of a sympathetic character. I think when I first started writing this book, I was worried about making her likable, sympathetic. I don't want that because having her be more likable in the beginning compromises the decisions that she ends up making in this portion of the book because they're not the best decisions. So I think I'm gonna to lean toward making her worse in the beginning and that way she has more room for improvement. She still has like a bad turn, not exactly a downfall, but definitely like, um, why are you doing this to yourself, girl? So that is currently what I'm writing. And it just feels kind of out of sync with what we know about Lark so far. I've started sort of taking, again, to Scrintle actually. I went ahead and I started mapping out the events that actually occurred throughout chapter 20, 10, 21. Like the setup for this act is there, but for some reason I'm not quite sure where to go and the stuff I've outlined for chapters 20 and 21 previously just aren't working. And honestly, looking back, they don't fit into the rest of the story I have mapped out very well either, so there's just some restructuring to do, some reconsideration. I might do that tonight just so I have the brainstorming done. I've written my thousand words for the day, I'm caught up. I just want to like know where I'm gonna place my feet next in this book. Yeah, what's frustrating about that is I kind of have no idea where to start. I think I'm just gonna keep jotting things down, brainstorming, figuring things out, and see where that takes me. <laughs> Hopefully somewhere good. It's just tricky when you've like gotten so far in a book and suddenly you're stuck, but you know what happens before and you know what happens after, and you just can't quite slot that thing into the middle. But no one can really solve this problem except for me, just in the sense that I'm the only one who understands my goals for the story. Um, so that's pretty much it for today. It was like a relatively boring day. I don't know how far I'm going to get in the process of drafting throughout this video. My hope against hopes is that I finish act four, but because of vacation, because of the chaos of this next couple weeks, who knows, we'll see. Bon appétit. I will catch you guys next time. Bye. Hi, we're back for a little update. Honestly, today wasn't very eventful. It's Sunday, January 21st. I just finished up a weekend of like staying in town, hanging out with friends. Today, we did some more cafe hopping. We actually went back to that same cat cafe we went to because they're so cute. And it's a pretty chill vibe to like get work done and read and stuff. I just am still feeling this dissatisfaction with my work so far on mods. Last night I did sit down and actually sort of write basically just a short summary of every event that happens in specifically chapters like 19 through 21, 22. Um, so mapping out the parts of Act 4 that feel a little muddy for me. Writing it as a summary kind of helps because I can sort of mention and tie in different character motivations. So I'm actually gonna read a little bit of that to you. So I'm gonna censor a little bit because I don't know. I don't know if spoilers are real or anything or if saying these events out of context of the story even makes sense, but just to sort of keep things on the DL. I wrote, at the start of the act, Lark succeeds at the second trial and everyone else walks out. She feels guilt, but also pride. So there's these conflicting emotions. A lot of her internal conflict gets very prominent in the story and very messy here. And it starts to bubble up in the surface and manifest as like traumatic events and reckless behavior basically. And so at this point, Lark has a pretty major choice. She has this big opportunity that requires compromising her morals. And so she can either take it or not. So morality versus her success and ambition and career stuff. And I feel like I'm always just going to have to keep that in mind. Like think about the various ways this decision is going to affect her and how I can draw that into the external conflict as much as possible. So hopefully that sort of illustrates what I mean. I use this exercise and it was very quick, like 10, 15, 20 minutes. And also writing a piece of the story 
as its own synopsis. Helped me sort of like work through, as I was writing, I was able to like come up with the next part and consider the next factor and how the internal conflict that Lark's experiencing will play into this beat, etc. It kind of helped. It helped. All this like organizational stuff is helping. Part of the issue that I'm experiencing is that I just am not as excited to write this part of the book as I thought I'd be. I'm still excited to finish, but now it's starting to feel like a long ways off. I'm starting to feel like the thousand words that I'm putting in per day are not quality words and I'm gonna have to go back and fix them. Ah, I don't know. I don't know if I should give myself a little break. I mean, inevitably I will because the amount of travel I'm doing over the next couple weeks is gonna just like make writing every day not possible. I don't know, will that be enough of a break? Do I need to take more time off? Do I need to be doing something else, working on a different story? I don't know, <laughs> I really don't know. I'm going to sort of see how the vacation stuff goes. I'm going to see how I feel creatively. I might give myself a couple days off. I do feel stressed out about the thousand words a day thing, but again, that's not a real goal because that's not feasible at this point in time. I'm just wondering what I should do to get myself out of this rut in the book. I think I might even toy with the possibility of just straight up skipping a couple of chapters and writing the parts that I do feel more, you know, excited about, enthusiastic about, have a clearer understanding of and grasp of, but I'm worried that will throw me off my game and if this part of the book that I'm stuck on, which is going to be so nebulous and subject to change, if it changes too much that means I might have to rewrite and scrap everything that I write that chronologically occurs after. So like, for example, chapters 20 to 21, if I skip to 22, how much of chapter 22 will change if my plans for chapters 20 to 21 change and how much will that put me off by? And there's just so, um, <laughs> just little casual things, just girly things that I've been thinking about. I think the best course of action for now, for as long as I can bear it, is to just keep writing in order at the pace I've been writing at, maybe a little slower. Try to get past this hurdle, even if it's not super effectively. I think the summary did help me sort of solidify what I want to happen. Really, another thing is that my prose is not coming out the way I want it to right now. I think I haven't been reading the right books, you know, doing the correct vocal exercises that'll help me write this book the way it wants to be written. Something that does help me when I start to lose my grasp on the voice is go back and reread or lightly line edit the very first couple chapters because that's usually where the voice is the most solid and is the most firm because you're just starting out. I love the voice. I, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I love the voice in the first couple chapters of Mods. It is third person limited, but there's like a little bit of sass in the narration almost that's not coming from Lark. It's not coming from her head. It's a little bit of like this slight tinge of an omniscient presence, which is something that I love to do. I love that like storyteller vibe where yes, the story is technically being told through limited, but there's like hints. Anyway, there's this very specific voice and tone to the first couple chapters, especially the first couple pages that I really liked. And I feel like I started to lose that, especially in these chapters that I've been writing from scratch and I haven't had much time to consider voice, which is natural. That's just something that will come with time in later chapters, as long as I give it the time. But I am just feeling this sense of like, rush, 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 and I don't 100% know what to do about it. That's that. We're going to be taking a minor hiatus from writing updates for a little bit because who knows if I'll be able to like film clips of myself talking because I'm staying in a lot of hostels, I'm not gonna lie. But I will show you guys some footage from the trip uh, and then once I get back, I will do sort of a big update on any writing I managed to get done throughout the trip. I will catch up with you guys in a little bit. Bye.
Okay, so it's currently Friday, February 2nd, and where am I? I'm in a hotel in Phuket on Patong Beach. It's my last full day of travel before I get to go back to my town, and I just wanted to catch you guys up, talk about what's been happening, and just sort of put that to the back burner because it's been kind of traumatic, and then talk about writing a bit. So I had bed bugs <laughs> for the third time. I swear to God, I had this thought. I was like, am I just having the same bed bugs over and over and unknowingly spreading them everywhere but the level of infestation at the place that i got them at which was the hostel i stayed at in krabi was so far be like i could not have brought them because it was actually dozens upon dozens upon dozens and it was every bed not just mine so it was not me that brought those bed bugs i swear um had bed bugs had to like wake up at what was it midnight found bed bugs on me after they said they'd like sprayed and everything like they were really trying to handle it, but it's just one of those things where how do you handle something so horrible and disgusting? Of course, that was not the end of my trials and tribulations. After switching hotels, like getting an emergency room at a different hostel the night that I found the bed bugs on me, like my whole room cleared out. We all had to like scatter basically. They only had one night, so I had to get my second night somewhere else because I had like two nights left in Krabi. So I had to get like a really expensive but nice resort for just literally a night. All that happened, I was like, okay, Krabi is a bust. I mean, it was mostly fun um but yeah whatever let's go on to the next destination i went to pp dawn instantly i get on the ferry i'm like i'm getting sick aren't i you can still kind of hear it and i was sick and i had four days on pp dawn and i was bedridden for like three of them probably the three was excessive but i just needed to like rest if i push myself too much when i'm sick i'm sick forever so i couldn't really enjoy the island even though the day that i did get to enjoy it was so beautiful the ocean was so clear and pleasant and warm too bad that i was sick for so much of it yeah now i'm here so bed bugs sickness something kind of bad also happened to me in krabi i'm not really ready to talk about it but yeah, there was some other stuff, so I've just been kind of out of it. And as a result, not much writing has gotten done. Obviously, when I was sick, I probably had the opportunity to work. My laptop stayed in my bag that whole time. I could not bring myself to get it out. But it gave me a lot of time to sit around and think about my writing and think about moths and think about my book. And I was actually having this conversation with my partner where we were talking about Sense8, a show that we both really love, that is admittedly super corny and misses the mark sometimes, right? Like it's not a perfect show. No, no piece of media is ever going to be the perfect piece of media. We were talking about how it's so sincere and such a project of passion and you can tell that the creators, the Wachowskis who made The Matrix, really cared about this project and really wanted to do so much with it. Um, and it really shows. And he was talking about how his favorite pieces of media are the ones where it shows, like you can tell the creator is passionate, which I feel like is the opposite of death of the author. But like, I get it because that love and that care does show through in the work nine out of 10 times, maybe 9.5. And then that got me thinking, I swear there's a point to this, is Moths a book that I'm passionate about? I don't know, since I started this vlog, I mean this vlog series, has helped me really get going with Moths and I have been really enjoying it and appreciating it. I feel like I've been so fixated on the finish line. I'm just like, I need to get done before March 1st and that's all I need to do. It's disconnected me from the story, but also was I ever really connected in the first place? You know, you can't feel as like super passionate and fired up and in love with a project every step of the way, especially if, like me, you want to have somewhat of a career in traditional publishing as a writer. You're going to have to meet deadlines, you're going to have to cut corners once in a while, you're going to have to write for the market to some extent. But I just think back to when I was writing my young adult contemporary fantasy, the one I've been working on since I was literally a child, and I had so much like love and excitement, like I would literally sit in the car, I remember, as a kid and daydream about those characters to the music on the radio. Like I was daydreaming about the story constantly, I was not paying attention in class, I was scribbling notes in the margins, drawing the characters, figuring out what they looked like, what they cared about, their likes and dislikes, their favorite food, where the story would go next, what their powers were. Like I was so, so in it. I always say that like I never really had, I feel like a lot of people had like their core piece of media growing up. They were a Harry Potter kid or a Percy Jackson kid. I identify as like a Percy Jackson kid, but really at the end of the day, this, I was this kid. I was the kid for my like childhood obsession was my own book as, vain as that sounds that's really how it played out and i miss that and i don't know if that's possible now as an adult which kind of concerns me i would like at least a fraction of that you know i don't have the time or the energy or the brain power frankly to be a child and have all of that childlike wonder and fascination and obsession with a singular story but i don't have any of that with moths um the most i care about is the main character lark because she's 
kind of a reflection of myself, but also not really because she's much worse. And when I try to think about what about this project actually gets me excited, it's like, oh, I think it'll sell really well. And I don't want to be at that point yet. I know eventually probably I will get to that point. And at the end of the day, it's all about finding the balance between creative passion and artistic merit and making money. And yeah, whatever, fine. I'll do that eventually, but I don't know. I want to care more about this project, like care about the stuff that happens in the story and the characters and the world. I don't know. Maybe I can work on becoming a little bit more passionate about the characters. But yeah, that's my existential dilemma as of the moment. Let me know if you too have ever felt this way. Uh, as for the rest of today, I have so much work to catch up on. So I'm literally going to like haul my laptop to a cafe because hotel Wi-Fi is not working. Yeah, basically there's a lot to do, so I should get going, but that is my update. That is my catch up. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Bye. Hi, so we're gonna wrap up this vlog real quick because it has been going on for slightly too long. It's currently Sunday, February 4th. I'm officially back in my town from vacation. The nightmare is over. Um, I think I'll talk a little bit more about what happened on that whole thing at a later point in time. In terms of writing, this vlog was kind of a mess. I feel like I was just all over the place the past couple weeks. Like I sort of lost my confidence and I was starting to lose my footing just in terms of how I feel about mods, how I feel about the project and my path moving forward it just got a lot shakier in act four. I'm still not out of that, honestly. That's the reality. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take work to fully emerge from that state of being. You know, not everything is gonna be wrapped up cleanly by the end of the vlog. This is really just a documentation of my process and how things change and how things progress with this book as I move toward the finish line. But as I mentioned in my last little talkie update, I have been thinking a lot about what parts of this project I'm really passionate about, what really makes it something that I would be proud to put the finished product forward and pursue querying with and potentially publication with that I can put my name on and be like, hey, this is a piece of writing by me. This is a story I want to tell and how that passion shows through for the story itself and how I've really just been focusing on hitting the finish line, which to a degree is necessary. But at the same time, it does kind of suck the joy out of it and the passion out of it. So I think finding that again will be a big theme just to wrap things up there. But yeah, sorry that this vlog has been all over the place. Obviously the vacation aspect of the past couple weeks has made this relatively chaotic. But to recap, still working on act four of Moths, very, very close to the finish line of the draft. Oh, another thing that I don't think I mentioned because I've been stuck in act four, I decided to go back. Um, I've been polishing up acts one and two, nothing major so far, just really like light work on act one, some line editing, cutting some unnecessary world building information, trying to make things a little smoother. My biggest concern for a long time with act one was that it read more like a series of events or a series of explanations than a story, if that makes sense. My favorite books, the most well-constructed narratives, in my opinion, that I tend to really enjoy are when you can see the groundwork being laid out in the first act or the first couple chapters. I think Alexi Harrow has a really good example of this. I recently read like her entire body of novel length narrative fiction. In the early stages of her books, you can see where the story is going. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. It's not that it's predictable, but you can feel the story ramping up to something. And I think I've somewhat accomplish that in mods. We'll see. The other part of this is that I am specifically polishing acts one and two up to send. Hopefully I'm planning to send those two acts to my main beta reader, who's like my best friend since childhood, and also Chris and Kelly, and then we're gonna see what they think. But it's nice because looking back at the stronger acts, I can kind of like see the foundations again. I have a very bad memory. I think that comes hand in hand with Athantasia. I'm really starting to see that my bad memory kind of affects my storytelling because there's a lot of setup that I low-key forgot about. So it's kind of good to go back and revisit and seeing what you know, foundations I laid down, what that can be built up to, especially in act four. Because all stories really at the end of the day, especially like longer form narratives, for me at least my goal is to make something that is like building upon itself continuously. But yeah, I'm going to send those acts over to people to read. I need to be perceived, I need to, I need this, I think. I'm really actually a little bit nervous because I feel like I've been working on this so long. And so at this point, there's definitely some level of expectation. And it makes me nervous when people tell me that they're excited to read mods. I'm like, you shouldn't be. I don't think it's actually like 
I don't know. I it just I'm just scared to not live up to people's expectations. I need the help. I'm sending it out. That's basically it. I'm gonna keep plugging away. Today, I think on the short story on Act Four, I'm gonna start the next stage of this vlog or the next episode of this vlog. Start that probably tomorrow or Tuesday. Yeah, a lot to do today. I think that's the thing, the thing I hate about vacation is that so much builds up and I have so little time to catch up on work. So yeah, we're ending the vlog. Thank you so much for watching and continuing as per usual. If you wanna keep following this journey I'm going on with mods, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to sort of pair back on my upload schedule in March. So I'm not gonna be doing those every week uploads, but I do intend to keep going through with this vlog series. Obviously my goal is to still finish that first draft of mods, whatever state it may be in by March 1st, because I just want to be done. But yeah, thank you so much again. All the comments, I know I just said that I get nervous when people say they want to read mods, but it's so nice to be on this journey with other people. And I've really enjoyed making these vlogs. I say it every time, but I genuinely have enjoyed making them. So thank you. Go ahead and subscribe to catch the next episode of this if you feel so inclined. Otherwise, that's fine. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.